Small Business Boot Camp and Resource Collective for this Tuesday, March 9th. Now we're excited to have everybody here. I'm Robert Theobald, the Small Business Ombudsman and Vice President of Small Business Services uh, for the Arizona Commerce Authority. And we want to first start by thanking all of our community partners. We could not do these sessions without them. Our community partners are instrumental in the boot camp content, the uh, quality, the expertise. Uh, we thank them for their efforts and, and the time that they give to this. Uh, we have one of our great community partners with us today, Local First. We're excited to have them presenting. Um, and we'll get to that here in a bit. First, I'd like to remind everybody the Small Business Boot Camp and Resource Collective is designed to help small businesses work through the COVID crisis. Uh, it is a program set up with our community partners. Uh, the initiative is supported by them. And besides just being a boot camp, it is a resource collective. And we will talk about what that means here in a second. So the Small Business Boot Camp webpage is a great resource to, to favorite, to, to flag, you know, pin on your star bar or wherever. Um, on this website, you can find the links to register for all the, for the upcoming sessions as we get them posted there. Um, you'll also have the link to the Resource Collective. And then you have an archive on there at the bottom of that website, of that webpage, that has all of the previous boot camp sessions. We record each session and we post them on there so that you can go back and watch them if you couldn't make the first time or re-watch them if you wanted to view the content that was there and re refresh uh, what you saw. We also include the slide decks on there uh, from the presenters so you can review that material as well. It, it is a great resource. The resource collective page um, is set up with tools and guides that are provided by our community partners. And these are uh, tools and guides that small businesses can use to help support their business, uh, work through the COVID crisis uh, and other things. So here is just a sample list of some of those tools and resources that you can find on the resource collective. As you can see, we cover uh, many different industries on there. We've got retail, we've got construction, manufacturing, salons, et cetera. So a lot of great, uh, great information. Also, you can find a lot of wonderful information on our COVID-19 Arizona Business Resource page. Uh, this is, you can find this at azcommerce.com forward slash COVID-19, or you can go to our website, azcommerce.com, and right across the top will be a big blue ribbon that will say Arizona Business Resources. So it is a great page that has business guidance, financial resources, and many other tools. Additionally, the ACA offers a number of programs that can help support small businesses. Our small business services are available to help navigate through the SBA, work with the SBDCs, work with SCORE, and many other non uh, no cost uh, business service programs that you can find throughout the state. Additionally, our workforce program can help support businesses looking to hire new employees or even upskill their existing employees. And our Manufacturing Extension Partnership, Arizona MEP, can help support manufacturers as they work through these challenges and return stronger. Additionally, during this time, a lot of people are looking to start their own businesses, uh, rebound by, by starting a side gig or starting a full-time business. And our Small Business Checklist is a great resource to help people looking to Start a business, identify the licensing and registration and compliance needs at the local, state, and federal levels. Then finally, I want to mention the state's COVID-19 information and resource page. This is for everything related to COVID-19. It is ArizonaTogether.org. Moving on, I want to look and talk about some just quick updates. Um, we have a few links here that are very important to, to keep your eye on. That. If you're looking at some of these programs, the Shuttered Venue Operators Grant FAQ is constantly being updated. So if you have a, a venue that was shuttered, a movie theater, concert hall, et cetera, uh, this is a great website to, to be aware of and to be reviewing often. Uh, additionally, the PPP updated FAQ. Uh, this page, they're constantly updating it and as more information comes out, they post it there. And so it's a great resource for PPP questions. Additionally, we have our PPP Arizona lender list. Uh, if you're still looking to get a PPP loan and need to find a lender, this is a great resource. 
And then finally, the SBA's COVID-19 relief options. Now this website lists all the relief options that the SBA is providing, not just the PPP and the EIDL and the shuttered venue, but there are some others that, that may relate to your business. So it's a great, uh, another great website. With that, I wanna look at next or this week's sessions. So today we have how going green can, finance, can financially help your business. Tomorrow we have a special session on the employee retention credit and how you can claim up to $19,000 per employee. So if you're not registered, definitely uh, register for tomorrow's session, special session. And then on Thursday, we're gonna have a great session on key takeaways from 2020 that, you can help, that can help you succeed in 2021. Uh, we have Steve Feld from SCORE is going to be presenting that. He's an awesome presenter, extremely knowledgeable, and we're looking forward to that session as well. So with that, we'll go ahead and turn our time over to Mike Peel, who is a statewide sustainability director for Local First Arizona. And Mike's put together a great presentation for us and how we can save money in our small businesses by doing some different things that uh, would be considered going green. So Mike, it is all yours. Thank you, Robert. I appreciate it. Thanks for everybody attending this morning. I'm looking forward to having this uh, time to talk through strategies for your business and the community on sustainability. So I'm going to share my screen now with my presentation. All right, Robert, can you see that? Yep, that looks good. All right. Well, I'll go ahead and I do encourage any uh, questions throughout as well as at the end. If you have any, uh, Robert will let me know. And uh, this is meant to be about strategies for how going green can financially help your business. I am uh, the statewide sustainability director for Local First Arizona, and we are uh, very excited about the progress being made with sustainability programs in the, in the state. We'll talk about that as well and how you can uh, access more resources and support through the work we're doing. So at Local First Arizona, our mission is to strengthen the local economy, making it more diverse and inclusive and resilient and sustainable. And so we are a, a nonprofit organization that has been doing this work for uh, over 15 years. And we have been known for the buy local movement to help uh, local businesses and you know, shifting our dollars to local businesses. So. You uh, probably have heard uh, about the movement in Arizona uh, because it's been going on for so long. Uh, we're really proud of it to have over 3,000 members engaged in this uh, idea of think local, buy local, be local. And we support and promote and advocate for a strong local business community and raise public awareness of the economic and cultural benefits provided by strong local economies. And we know that uh, local businesses contribute to a sustainable economy for Arizona and build vibrant communities we're all proud to call home. A key statistic that we point to is what th basically uh, the, uh, the major benefits of shifting even just 10% of your dollars local uh, can have a big benefit. Uh, so uh, the stat that we look at is for every $100 spent at a locally owned business, $43 remains in the economy for a comparison to non-local for every $100 spent at a non-locally owned business, only $13 remains in the economy. So thinking about the bigger picture here and the larger benefits, we are about an Arizona that is economically resilient and increasingly self-reliant, economically inclusive of all residents who have widespread opportunities to succeed, that is thriving, entrepreneurial and innovative with access to capital and environmentally sustainable with businesses in the lead. So when I'm speaking about environmental sustainability, I'm talking also about economic sustainability and ensuring that our communities can look forward to a prosperous future for all. So we uh, link the two, we link uh, equity goals to sustainability. We look at uh, the cost savings that can occur also, who is disproportionately impacted by climate, uh, climate change and climate impacts. So uh, the major goals of our team in helping our members be more sustainable include the following. First, it's to reduce operating costs by saving on utilities. Second is to reduce energy, water, waste, and carbon emissions. Third is educating businesses, employees, and patrons. Fourth is preparing for a future with a change in climate. And 
Fifth is attract and retain clients, customers, and employees. So today I'm gonna to speak about some starting strategies that you can uh, initially get started with. And then we will talk about the uh, uh, together if there's any questions there uh, you might have. And also if you wanna learn more about our programs, I'll highlight what we have available currently to go a lot further. So uh, through the EPA, we have uh, a number of resources that we have access to that we're fortunate to be able to integrate into our programs. One of the starter resources that we'll talk about now is the Sure Energy Savers. So uh, again, these are initial strategies to get started. According to the EPA, it's easy to get started improving the energy efficiency of your facility with uh, little expertise or money. Uh, because there are many reliable, low risk, high return actions that you can do and are relatively simple. So if resources permit, you can undertake a comprehensive energy efficiency program or sustainability program that we offer many. And with the assistance of a professional, if needed, you can yield even greater savings. However, while you are considering such comprehensive measures, you can at least implement many of these actions from the following list that you can start saving now. So I'm gonna start with lighting. With uh, EPA, lighting part one here, first is uh, very simple, turn off lights and other equipment when not in use. Our high utility costs there that often include paying for energy that is completely wasted by equipment that's left on for long periods while not in use. Uh, those vampire loads can really add up. Second is to re uh, replace incandescent light bulbs with Energy Star qualified LEDs or CFLs wherever appropriate for savings. And those can add up. I can uh, speak to the experience of businesses that we've worked with that have done that who uh, as uh, starting off with the, those uh, strategies have been able to save a lot over uh, an annual uh, return on investment. So lighting part two, consider installing switch plate occupancy sensors in proper locations to automatically turn lighting off when no one is present and back on when people return. So even good equipment can be installed wrong. So uh, don't install the sensor behind a coat rack, door, bookcase, et cetera. It must be able to see an approaching person's motion to turn on the light before or as they enter an unlit area. Next, adjust lighting to your actual needs. Use free daylighting wherever possible. And then to prevent glare, eye strain and headaches, do not overlight. Too much light can be as bad for visual quality as too little light and it costs a lot more. Next, uh, for some businesses, this uh, may apply to install Energy Star qualified exit signs. These exit signs can dramatically reduce maintenance by eliminating lamp replacement and can save $10, uh, $10 uh, per sign annually in electricity costs while preventing up to uh, 500 pounds of greenhouse gas emissions. Consider upgrading from older T12 tubes with magnetic ballast to more efficient T8 fluorescent lamp tubes with solid state electronic ballast. So now I'm going to shift into HVAC, heating and air conditioning. So this one is uh, particularly relevant to where we are in this desert community. First, uh, tune up your heating, ventilating, and air conditioning system with an annual maintenance contract. Even a new Energy Star qualified HVAC system, like a new car, will decline in performance without regular maintenance. Next, a uh, contract automatically ensures that your HVAC contractor will provide pre-season tune-ups before each cooling and heating season. Your chances of an emergency HVAC breakdown also become very remote with regular maintenance and, and definitely with uh, more, uh, more of a focus on uh, the, uh, the temperature rising here. Uh, I think that people uh, really wanna focus on this I'm finding. So uh, it, can, uh, it can help a lot to focus on these starting actions. Next, regularly change or clean uh, HVAC filters every month during peak cooling or heating season. New filters usually only cost a few dollars. These dirty filters cost more to use, overwork the equipment, and result in lower indoor air quality. Then also consider to install an Energy Star qualified programmable thermostat to automate your HVAC system. This, is a, this solid state electronic device optimizes HVAC operation 24 seven based on your schedule 
and can be overridden as needed for unscheduled events. So staff and visitors always enter a comfortable facility. Uh, this smart thermostat can turn on the HVAC a certain amount of time before arrival instead of heating or cooling unoccupied space. So uh, this all can add up to do this well and plan ahead. So continuing on with heating and air conditioning, control direct sun through windows depending on the season and local climate. During cooling season, block direct heat gain from the sun shining through glass on the east and especially west sides of the facility. Depending on your facility, options such as solar screens, solar films, awnings, and vegetation can help a lot. Uh, over time, trees can attractively shade the facility and help clean the air. In uh, Tucson, there's a uh, big initiative that the community is excited about, a million trees initiative uh, that is uh, getting a lot of uh, community support. So uh, consider trees and uh, it could go a long way. Interior curtains or drapes can help, but it is best to prevent the summer heat from getting past the glass and inside. During heating season with the sun low in the south, unobstructed southern windows can contribute solar heat gain during the day. Also keep exterior doors closed while running your HVAC. It sounds simple, but it will help to avoid wasteful loss of heated or cooled air. Also use fans when the room area is occupied. Comfort is a function of temperature, humidity, and air movement. Moving air can make a somewhat higher temperature and or humidity feel comfortable. Fans can help delay or reduce the need for air conditioning and a temperature setting of as much as three to five degrees higher can feel just as comfortable with fans and each degree of higher temperature can save about 3% on cooling costs. Next, when the temperature outside is more comfortable than inside, a box fan in the window or large whole facility fan in the attic can push air out of the facility and pull in comfortable outside air. Fans can improve comfort and save energy year round. Next, uh, plug leaks with weather stripping and caulking. This will help prevent the escape of heated or cooled air from your facility. And then caulking and weather stripping is also lets you manage your ventilation, which is the deliberate controlled exchange of stuffy inside air for fresher outdoor air. Then uh, the uh, opportunity to focus on office equipment. Always uh, consider buying Energy Star qualified products for your facility from the standpoint of cost savings, uh, the Energy Star mark indicates the most efficient computers, printers, copiers, televisions, windows, thermostats, ceiling fans, and other appliances and equipment. At Local First, we uh, highly uh, utilize the uh, Energy Star Portfolio Manager tool as well because it's been highly effective in being accessible for our businesses to track their usage. I'll talk about this later on in the presentation, but overall, uh, these are uh, great resources out there for understanding what uh, is going to save you money and be environmentally friendly. So shifting now to water, hot and cold, uh, consider uh, first fixing leaks. Small leaks add up to many gallons of water and dollars wasted each month. Water conservation saves energy and money, especially when it's hot water. And then use water saving faucets, shower heads, toilets, and urinals to save water. And install an insulation blanket on water heaters seven years of age or older and insulate the first three feet of the heated water out pipe on both old and new units. And again, speaking to the experience of businesses in our programs, they have found there's been significant savings from focusing on water and getting a, a, an audit done to know what they might have for opportunities for savings and uh, fixing leaks can go a long way when you may not know that they're even an issue. So then uh, moving on here to the next one, if you're buying a new water heater, always buy the most efficient model possible in areas of infrequent water use. Consider tankless water heaters to reduce standby storage costs and waste. Set water temperature only as hot as needed to prevent scalds and save energy. And then when landscaping, practice green landscaping, greenscaping or zero scaping to preserve natural resources and prevent waste and pollution by using plants that are native to your climate that require minimal watering and possess better pest resistance. Consider a diverting gray water for irrigation rather than using fresh water. 
for the restaurants out there, for uh, any food service businesses, kitchen and food service equipment, purchase uh, Energy Star qualified commercial food service equipment as a first step to consider. Uh, for example, qualified refrigerators and re uh, freezers are on average 35% more energy efficient than standard models, which equals up to $170 annually for refrigerators and $120 for freezers. Deep freezers, uh, deep fryers can save between $80 and $600 per year. Uh, hot food holding cabinets can save an average of $430 per year, and steam cookers can save nearly $550 per year, depending on fuel. For existing refrigerators, they uh, consider uh, as a step to clean refrigerator coils twice a year and replace door gaskets if a dollar bill easily slips out when closed between the door's seals. Next, have large and walk-in refrigeration systems serviced at least annually. This includes cleaning, refrigerant, top-off, lubrication of moving parts, and adjustment of belts. This will help ensure efficient operation and longer equipment life. And also consider retrofitting existing refrigerators and display cases with anti-sweat door heater controls and variable speed evaporator fan motors and controls. And I, again, I can speak to the uh, benefits of uh, doing this for the businesses that we know have gone in this direction. It's been highly uh, effective and cost saving. So now I wanna shift over to uh, a framework to consider for any of these efforts that you might undertake. And what we at Local First look at, and it's based on years of doing this program work with businesses, is a tiered approach. So really looking at it as a level up approach to identify first, like you're hearing about today, easy, low cost, no cost, short payback measures, to then look at medium cost, medium payback measures, and then higher cost, longer payback measures with potential energy savings by tier described here. So we uh, look at that as plan, design, implement, and verify. And verify meaning tracking the data, tracking through like a tool such as EPA Energy Star Portfolio Manager can go a long way. And that's a free tool. So uh, first off, tier one, typically that's uh, four to six months uh, looking at, at low cost and no cost improvements with payback less than a year. And that projected potential tier one savings typically is uh, between five to 10%. Then going further, tier two is uh, one year plus medium cost improvements with paybacks of typically one to two years. And the potential tier one savings uh, then coupled with tier one savings can uh, go a long way and can lead to tier three type projects, larger sustainability investments. And that's typically two years plus for payback for these higher cost improvements with paybacks over the two years plus. So I wanna note that savings in each tier can be used as initial funding for improvements in the tiers and that all tiers can actually occur in parallel, uh, but the planning design implementation validation uh, verification takes longer for more complex tiers. So just uh, noting that because uh, highly recommend audits to be considered with any uh, larger endeavors or just generally uh, it, it get a better sense of how your facility is uh, working well and where it can be improved. So some other recommended tips, we have uh, our scale up workshops and I'll talk about that. And we also recommend looking at Energy Star certified contractors and energy service companies. Uh, also implementing with the goal to save money through reducing energy usage aligned with sustainability goals related to the tiered upgrades, establish preliminary tier two and tier three strategies uh, while rolling in the tier one savings and strategies to support those uh, investments. Then also develop and sustain a green team to help with sustainable planning for the future. Remember that uh, organizational behavior changes can account for an initial savings of at least 10%. Just being aware within your team, within your facility, what the improvements can be and making those smaller changes can go a long way. If that has not been a focus or a priority before, it can go a long way. So uh, green teams are a big part of the work that we do with our sustainability uh, programs and the projects that we undertake for a longer term commitment to be made. We are uh, really aiming for a uh, commitment to sustainability, not just uh, one project to be done and I, the benefits are much greater as a result. 
Also to uh, verify progress by using tools such as, again, Energy Star Portfolio Manager to track your utility costs and savings. And remember that uh, visibility of progress can uh, only be achieved through tracking bills and tracking your usage. And that helps when you can speak to, uh, to the community about how much you've saved. If you've saved 10% or 20% or 50% over time, that's, uh, that's a exciting milestone to be able to, to promote. And then consider soliciting bids for integrated systems uh, building audit, including ESCO contract bids and utilizing rebates. Uh, there are significant rebates out there through the utilities to uh, consider, and we uh, help guide that process for participants in our programs. So I want to highlight more details on Portfolio Manager if you're interested in going further than these smaller measures. Uh, benchmarking is the way to go. And again, I recommend it no matter what, because uh, it helps you better understand uh, where you're at and you can uh, manage uh, where you're going. So benchmarking means to compare energy, including fleet, water, and waste generation to something similar to gain a perspective about building performance. And there are many benefits to doing this. First, to assess the whole building energy and water consumption. Next, to track green power purchases. Uh, next is to share and report data with others, and then track changes in energy, water, greenhouse gas emissions, and cost over time, create custom reports, and apply for Energy Star certification if that's of interest. So the uh, first step in changing the way you use energy, water, and waste in the future is understanding how much you use today. So through a tool like this, you learn where, how, and how much is used. You can then save better on operational costs. You have a better uh, handle on where you're at to do so. Uh, you can understand the water energy nexus where there's overlap opportunities. You can uh, see in real time uh, where you're at by continuing to update your, uh, your data in the system and uh, look at trends over time. And then, uh, then better have a competitive advantage in green, the, the green marketplace and show sustainability leadership in the community. Another uh, consideration with portfolio manager is that uh, typically these buildings are more efficient than 75% of similar buildings and have 35% less energy on average uh, in uh, usage and 35% fewer greenhouse gas emissions on average. And then higher income and increased rental value as well as higher employee satisfaction. So to commit to continuous improvement, like I was referencing earlier, we recommend these steps, and that's part of what we do through our programs, a big part of it, is first determining your scope. Identify organizational and time parameters for goals. Next uh, is to estimate the potential for improvement by reviewing baselines, benchmark to determine the potential and order of upgrades, and then conduct technical assessments and audits. And then establish goals. Create and express clear, measurable goals with target dates for the entire organization, facilities, and other units. So those three steps are, are major to consider for your planning. And in addition, no-cost actions can be leveraged to pay for low-cost upgrades, which pay for higher-cost upgrades for larger savings, as a reminder. And just to be aware that you can't manage what you don't measure. Also, efficiency first is a big part of our messaging to uh, before buying HVAC, solar or boiler equipment that's more expensive, for example, to first reduce waste and be more efficient to right size new equipment and protect their return on investment. So another uh, consideration with this work that we do is uh, national goals. And so there's a, a 2030 challenge for planning that we are linked with. Uh, we uh, are part of the 2030 district's uh, efforts nationally, and uh, there are uh, 22 cities that have committed to this challenge. And so the idea of the, ch of the challenge is within a district of buildings that commit to this pledge, uh, they work to meet these goals. And the pledge is to reduce at least 50% by the year 2030 in energy, water, and transportation emissions. Uh, and that's, a, again, a minimum of at least 50%. So... Uh, the goal is to even go beyond that. And what we uh, particularly like about this set of goals is there are step goals here. So within the district and uh, looking at the uh, buildings involved in their usage as a whole, and on average how they're all doing, 
the goals go from 2020, 20% reduction goals to then 35% reduction goals in 2025 to then 50% at least uh, by 2030. And so we think this is a, a great way to motivate uh, more in the community to, to make a, a commitment to larger efforts and uh, to see what else can happen by working with uh, local partners like the municipalities and the utilities to uh, have more incentives available to do this. And this, uh, this kind of challenge requires tier three uh, efforts to be undertaken to really get there. And uh, it requires what we call deep retrofits to uh, go further. And so not expected right out the gate that everyone will commit to this kind of effort, but we do encourage it for continuous uh, improvement work. So now I'm gonna shift over to our programs. Uh, I will pause for a moment. Robert, are there any questions I can answer before I go into our program side of the presentation? Um, no, there are any questions right now. Again, everybody, if you have questions, post them in the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. That we all have some time for some Q&A today. Um, and please bring your questions. You know, before you jump into the programs, you know, question I have is you mentioned doing audits to understand where you may be able to save some money by some of these simple changes in how you operate on a day-to-day -day basis. How would I go about trying to find some place or somebody to do an audit? That's a great question. So we have a whole uh, list that we put together of uh, potential uh, businesses to connect with for that kind of work. There's also research out there you could do on your own, but we have taken time to uh, research ones that uh, we recommend that we know are uh, local. Uh, and so, uh, of course, being local first and a local business coalition. But then, uh, yeah, there's uh, information out there, including through the EPA. If you want to look for Energy Star uh, certified contractors, that's an opportunity to go through their website. And I can uh, send that kind of information on to anybody who's interested, whether it's local or, or uh, non-local. Uh, I can send that information on. Excellent. Thank you. Great question. Thanks. All right. Well, then I'm going to shift over here to how we can guide this process for those who want to go much further, uh, want to get started and aren't, aren't quite sure where to start. So uh, we uh, meet businesses where they're at. And so our sustainability programs focus on both businesses and the community, including nonprofits, and helping prepare for the future by finding solutions to lessen impact and empowering citizens to play a role in making our state resilient. So we have the Arizona Green Business Program, Scale Up Program, Southern Arizona Green Leaders, and we have many sustainability campaigns, including with Water Use It Wisely on a regular basis. So uh, first off, we have our certification program, the Arizona Green Business Certification Program. This is a program designed to provide a deep understanding of the various high impact actions a business can take for a plan through certification. It's available in Tempe, Phoenix, and Mesa. And it's a custom toolkit. So it's full of best practices and ideas that can positively affect your bottom line, focusing on energy consumption, water conservation, waste diversion, pollution prevention, transportation emissions, and stormwater and wastewater. So there are many benefits to this program that I'll go over now. First off, uh, there's the listing on the online directory and mobile app. There's the certificate to display in your business. There's the digital seal to post on marketing materials, as well as a customized sustainability plan showing best practices and recommendations on how to improve, as well as assistance from the LFA green team to achieve your sustainability goals. In addition, there's recognition in LFA marketing and press releases, helping to save money with less wasteful processes, recognition as a sustainability leader in our community, and then growing loyalty with customers and employees that are seeking out environmentally friendly businesses. So this is a, a program highly recommended for where to start if you're uh, just getting started or if you've done a lot and you wanna get recognized for it and take on some more actions, this can meet a business where they're at no matter where you're at in your journey with, with sustainability. Then we have a, a program called Scale Up that is a, a project planning program. And this is a comprehensive virtual seven week workshop series on sustainable project planning. It's available to local businesses throughout the state. 
and now it's virtual and uh, we uh, are appreciative of uh, the many partners involved uh, we have dozens of partners engaged in it to offer uh, this pathway approach it's an opportunity to go from sustainability education and collaboration to project planning financing and implementation all in one accessible package so uh, this is a program supported by the state of arizona and we've been able to get a lot of interest generated in uh, just a few years time, and including a, a, an award from Tucson Electric Power for their Go Green Award uh, a few years back for the economic development approach that we take with this program. So it's Arizona focused in its content and it's focused on environmental sustainability project planning for cost savings and community impact. It's a seven week workshop series for business resiliency, climate action and community benefits. And we focus on essential strategies for energy, water, waste, transportation, green teams, and social impact for sustainability that enhance customer and employee engagement. And we have a mix of uh, uh, smaller to larger measures that you can consider, uh, tier one to tier three. So we uh, make sure that we cover the, uh, the spectrum here. Not that it's expected that a business takes on all of it within the program, but we want uh, the, uh, the businesses to be aware uh, of all the opportunities that they can uh, link with their, with their business plan. So through the program, we focus on learning together uh, so that businesses can track what they're doing. It's a very data-based program. So we go through Energy Star Portfolio Manager together so that there is that benchmarking done and your current usage is uh, fully understood and then uh, continuously tracked. We collaborate through this uh, cohort-based approach, and you can network with other like-minded businesses. Then you plan for sp uh, specific sustainability projects as a participant in the program, and that also have an equity component that can also save money in many cases with the uh, planning that you do through the program. We also support uh, financing for projects if needed through a low interest revolving loan fund and then support the implementation of the projects with a year long uh, process after the seven weeks that we continue to work with the cohort, which is a, a unique feature of the program among many, uh, so that you can get recognition and gain exclusive benefits for uh, showing a successful reduction in energy, water, waste, and or transportation emissions. We're uh, very excited that there are exclusive incentives in the program uh, as we're building it. And then getting recognized for your efforts through social media, promotions and recommendations, just like the certification program and rebuilding uh, your business plan in mind with an emphasis on equity and sustainability and attracting customers and engaging employees for greater project impact. So a scale up project defined is leading to a projected at least a 20% reduction in energy use, water consumption, waste generation and or transportation emissions. And then each project having a social component, ensuring equity, resiliency, and communication with the community that are all incorporated into the plan. And uh, scale up stands for sustainability, sustainable communities accessing lending and education upon performance. So the program is a uh, is a way to workshop your your ideas and how to figure out where to prioritize um, most, where you're going to have the greatest impact. So what makes a project a top priority? We help guide that process. What makes the project fit into the larger context of greenhouse gas emissions reduction and the data needed to track? And what are larger business and community needs to be considered? So the goals for participants are to first develop sustainability concepts for your business. Next, to prioritize equity, resiliency, and community engagement. Next, to uh, learn from sustainability successes to date and go further. Then to save money, attract customers, retain good employees uh, by having them engaged and build a stronger and more resilient state. And then the financial tools that go along with this. First, there's a cost benefit analysis sheet uh, for the return on investment to be analyzed and a payback analysis sheet. Uh, all together. And then there's an Arizona rebate sheet that's been put together. So you can get all the rebates all in one place across the, uh, across the community. And then uh, loan options, including uh, our scale up green community, uh, low interest revolving loan fund, and then uh, connections to local credit unions and community banks as needed. So the structure of the workshop series, 
We start with an orientation, looking at benchmarking training, environmental justice, resiliency, and disaster planning strategies. Uh, and then uh, going on from that, uh, water is the week two focus with water efficiency and sustainable landscaping. Then week three is energy and focusing on uh, renewable energy and building efficiency. Week four is waste, waste management, zero waste practices, sustainable procurement. Week five is transportation, electric vehicles and alternative transportation. Week six is culture of sustainability, green team and employee engagement and policy and communication. And then week seven is sustainability presentations where the cohort presents about what their focus area or areas uh, plan to be and how they can all connect if uh, there's interest to collaborate. We've seen that happen with a number of the cohort participants. So it's also a recap of what's been learned and how they'll get uh, continuing support uh, through the, the, the community of support that we've built out, this network that we're built, building together. So uh, that includes University of Arizona support uh, currently, and we hope to have much more support going forward. So the, uh, there are teams of students and faculty that are matched up with the businesses that need additional support to meet larger goals. So that's uh, it been an exciting development to have uh, support for more research to be done on the plan that's been developed out of the workshop series and uh, more analysis on the data uh, as needed. So going into a case study of scale up, this is a delectables catering and venue. Through scale up, they uh, completed the following actions, installed uh, the window film to reduce heat and glare, increased inspection and maintenance of property to catch leaks and maintain efficient function, replaced numerous fixtures and appliances to increase facility efficiency. The benefits of these actions include reduced heat generated and cooling needed to maintain a comfortable space, reduced utility costs, particularly water and energy, and greater awareness of property needs in common areas requiring repair. And now their next steps include educating future tenants about sustainability practices, replacing remaining kitchen light fixtures as needed, and uh, continuing to participate in TEP Solar Shares program. Uh, so then moving on to case study two, with the knowledge from scale up, Wholesome Harvest completed the following actions, reduced air leaks through windows, doors, and walls, replaced two greenhouse swamp coolers with models that are 46% more efficient, installed more efficient toilets and acquired six sink aerators to save 16,000 gallons a month on water as well as building shade, and replaced air handling units in a greenhouse for 20% energy savings. The benefits of these actions include uh, reduced energy needs as a result of fewer leaks and more efficient fans, reduced water needs for upgrading of restroom facilities and installation of uh, the sink aerators. And now their next steps include continued improvement of reducing heat and cooling needs by reducing air leaks and adding shade and evaluation of fleet management and finding opportunities to reduce fuel costs and emissions. This is an example of a project that focused on one particular area of 20% uh, energy savings, but then did a lot more as well in other areas. So we uh, aim for comprehensive projects here like this one. And it doesn't mean that they'll all be in every uh, category that we cover, every area that we cover, but uh, ideally each uh, project has a, a holistic approach to sustainability. Another example here is Sonoran Glass School. Uh, they were looking for a way to recycle their furnace glass blowing shops, glass waste. And then through scale up, they connected to another local business, Bottle Rocket, and put 100 pounds a week of glass waste, quote unquote, rather than making it waste, they were able to find another way, uh, a way to reuse, um, to use it in concrete products for uh, their countertops and planters and candles and pet bowls that they sell locally. So we love it when there's that kind of collaboration that occurs within the cohort, uh, when there's those kinds of connections made for project, uh, project engagement and collaboration. That's the ideal outcome when more of that happens. So uh, going into scale up uh, where we are now, we're running these quarterly, these cohorts. And so you can see here, cohort one, uh, we uh, started this, uh, just in the last year doing this quarterly, we piloted the program a few years back and then uh, we've been able to get it to a place of now running it quarterly and having that kind of interest generated for 
uh, typically a cohort is uh, 10 to 12 participants. And so we keep it small to be able to provide that customized support that makes the program what it is. Uh, so you can see here, this is the list of participants for the first one. And then cohort two, uh, a mix of uh, Tucson and Phoenix. We, uh, we started to expand the program out uh, last year to be uh, statewide. And so it started in Southern Arizona, then uh, we were able to uh, move quickly to be a virtual format so that we could uh, offer it to anybody who's interested across the state to join. So I think you might see some recognizable businesses here. There's a, been a mix of newer businesses and legacy businesses joining, which has been uh, another exciting outcome for us. And then uh, just recently wrapped up our third cohort, about to start our fourth cohort later today, actually. Uh, and uh, yeah, again, a mix of uh, Phoenix and Tucson and legacy businesses and newer businesses. And then I want to uh, uh, finally give a, uh, an example of what we mean when we say uh, social impact with the program. And so uh, there's a participant in Scale Up, a business, a newer business, Harris Fletcher Enterprises. They're building uh, an affordable housing project for refugees and veterans. Their goal is for this building to be a model sustainability project that's emphasizing natural building methods, including embargoing. The owners are disabled vets who experienced long-term poverty as children, and now they are creating solutions for those experiencing financial, housing, and food insecurities. And the goal of this project through Scale Up is to provide sustainable low-income housing and to do that in uh, a way that would connect to all the different areas of Scale Up that we cover, and also to be a community model. So they're looking at all of the areas, energy, water, waste, transportation, reductions and uh, other uh, strategies within the program. They plan to only use Energy Star and Water Sense appliances and plant edible fruit trees to create an urban food forest. And this will result in a projected uh, 25 to 50% energy savings, depending on how many of the uh, measures that they implement, uh, which is uh, of course a significant cost savings. They also plan to plant edible fruit trees to create an urban forest and, uh, to, for feeding the community, as well as reducing the heat index. So right on time here, I want to offer a few more, uh, uh, few more points here. Just uh, if you have any questions about any of this today, please uh, reach out to me at mike at localfirstaz.com. Our website is localfirstaz.com. We just uh, launched a new website, so highly recommend checking it out. And that literally just happened in the last week. So you can see on the uh, homepage, uh, the, uh, the new layout, and we have a whole uh, sustainability page that will uh, give you plenty of details about scale up and the station program and uh, many other efforts that we have underway. So we are uh, very excited to see this kind of interest. Again, uh, there, there's so much, uh, so much happening right now within sustainability nationwide and globally. To see Arizona uh, doing so much is, uh, is encouraging. I think we are uh, really a leader uh, in the nation if we keep at it. Uh, particularly, there's a, a lot of focus on electric vehicles right now. And I think being engaged in those efforts statewide has been exciting for us too. Uh, we're starting to work on some demonstration projects for planning for uh, uh, across the state electric vehicle charging stations uh, to be uh, located at local business hubs and to uh, increase the, um, the demand for electric vehicles, but also to uh, ensure that the cost savings are there for the businesses that undertake such a big project. And that's another scale up project that's underway. So uh, happy to report that uh, a lot of progress being made and it all comes down to the, uh, to the planning. Uh, with the right plan, uh, the savings can be there and the opportunities can be realized. So I will stop sharing now and turn it over for the remainder to any questions and comments. Excellent, thank you, Mike. If you have questions, please post them in the Q&A box. Um, I do see one question in the chat that I'll bring up real quick. It says, how is ROI calculated and what is the cost of capital? I think referring back to some of the other programs. Right, so we look at the ROI uh, return on investment based on uh, the time uh, of typically we look at two years 
uh, with Energy Star Portfolio Manager. So we uh, we need at least 12 months of data to even have a, a profile an account set up under that system. It's better to have more than one year of data though for energy bills, water bills, gas bills. Uh, having two years allows for seeing the larger trends and to see where uh, more opportunities can be realized. So uh, it's 12 months to 24 months of data is where we, uh, where we start for calculating the return on investment. Excellent. And then we have another question from Shane in the q and It says, how much does the Arizona Green Business Program cost to get certified? So that depends on the, uh, the business. I'm going to share the link right here for everybody. For all of our programs, uh, I'll get the link right here. And then let me know if you have any questions from there. That's so the same for scale up. It depends on the business uh, and the size of the business. Is that, did you put that link in the chat? Yeah, I'm putting that there okay. right now. Excellent. All right, just put that in there. Yep, you posted the chat. So if you didn't open your chat, open up your chat, you can find the link uh, for their programs. Mike just posted it there. Uh, we do have another question pop up. Uh, Shane was just saying thank you for his, the answer. Um, you know, I, I look back, I did some work in a previous company I worked for, it was a very large business and we did a program where we solicited ideas from all the employees at every level that might be able to save the company some money um, on just practices. And there were a number of amazing ideas that came from the employees. And one was a way to save some paper. And this was a business, uh, big box business with thousands of locations across the country. And it may sound simple, but this I, one of the ideas would end up saving the company $1,000 a year um, per store. Well, in one store that's doing millions, $1,000 may not sound like a lot, but when you add it up across the numbers of, of stores, it was hundreds of thousands of dollars in savings. And so those little savings, they do add up over time. And if you think about the savings that can lower your some of your different bills right now, that's allows for other opportunities in your business, whether it's just to, to make, you know, hit your break even, or whether it's to, you know, save a few hundred dollars to, that you can then use and turn back to your employees um, in some other way, it, it makes a big difference over time, you know? And so I like what Mike said early on, I'm going green because it doesn't have to be, you know, some big initiative you undertake, it can be simple things that you can do in your business that will save you money and, and be more efficient. And so, you know, some great input and great tips and tricks uh, in the presentation. So thank you, Mike. Um, I don't see thank you, that. Also, I did want to add, if you're in Tempe, Phoenix or Mesa, we're very thankful for the support of our uh, city partners on the Arizona Green Business Certification Program. So that program is uh, is able to be uh, subsidized by those cities. So if you're in those cities, let us know if you're interested, let me know, email me, and uh, we can get you involved in that program at no cost. So that's a great opportunity and it might be a, a great model for other uh, cities to follow. And then the scale up uh, program is, uh, again, it depends on business type and our other certification program, business type and size, I mean. So uh, that links there as well. So yeah, I did want to give a big shout out to our city partners there that make it possible to do this work. Excellent, thank you. Um, appreciate those cities participating. I want to thank everybody for joining. We're going to go ahead and wrap up a few minutes early, let everybody gain back five minutes uh, in the day um, or run to the restroom before the next you know, Zoom call at 10 o'clock, who knows. But uh, I want to thank everybody for joining us. Uh, we want to thank Mike for bringing this presentation to us and sharing this great uh, insight. Uh, we look forward to seeing everybody tomorrow on our special session on the employee retention credit. Uh, please join us at 9 a.m. Until then, uh, everybody have a great day and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks. Thank you. Have a good day.